Hey YouTube, this is Nash Taters. Welcome back to another episode of War of the Visions. It is Monday time and it is Monday news. Now I noticed that when I checked the notice board this morning, I realized they already released some information. But to keep with the tradition, I will stick to Monday news and review all the information that I've given to us over the weekend. Now, is this change going to be going forward, going to be something that they're going to keep doing? I don't know, but it doesn't really matter to me because I still want to keep the content for Monday news. All right, so let's begin the video with summons. We're going to talk about the much anticipated, at least from my perspective, releasing it to you guys, the drama series that I've been watching lately and the long history of it. And then we're going to talk about all the new notices So we have a few days left on this, free summons, let's go ahead and do our free one. Originally I was going to do the introduction for the video of the series, but I decided I want to keep with the Final Fantasy theme every intro and then go ahead and play the music in the background. So as you can see the background music has something to do with the series that I'm about to talk about. The music is very good because it is two famous singers from Hong Kong from way back in the 1980s. There's three parts to this series, and today I'm only going to cover the first part. And they actually sang the intro to all three parts. And the series lasted from 1983 to 1984. So after this, we'll get into a little bit, and I'll try to only spend a few minutes. All right, so far, nothing good. No change. Oh. Here we go. Okay, love it. I love it. I love it. Funeral. All right. No problem there. So no Keto Fei. That's fine. No Eldara, no Keto Fei. But one step closer to finishing Venera, which I'm actually quite quite happy with. So let's talk about this new series that I've been watching. It's actually a pretty old series. The book was written in 1950s and there was three books or novels, as you will. But in the 1980s, the Hong Kong folks released all three series of the first book. And it was broken down. The first one was 19 episodes. And then the next two series were 20 episodes each. So basically, the story is set in the backdrop of pretty much fighting times in China, in which the Song people, the Jing people, and of course the Mongols to the north and there was some turmoil between the folks fighting each other, pretty much fighting for supremacy of China. Now, in the beginning of the first small series, mini-series, I guess you could call it, was revealing the two main characters. They haven't even been born yet in the first episode. And so the basic storyline was the two set of parents about to give birth to the two children, and they met a person who was a Taoist at the time, fighting against one of the corruptions of the government currently at the time, and he was asked to give names to the two children. So if you combine the names of the two children that hasn't been born yet, they will form one word that will supposedly remind them of the turmoil times of that era. Now, they also made a pact. If one of the child was a boy and the other child was a girl, they would be set to get married. If both children were females or males, then they would be both joined together as like blood brothers or blood sisters. It's a very cool concept. Very popular in Hong Kong. In fact, there have been so many reboots, I started watching the 2017 version, which was the actual direct remake of the 1983 version. And so far, that has been my favorite, even though I still love the 1983 version. I'm gonna show you some slides of why I'm watching this series. Here we go. Now, as you can see, I think it goes without saying that if you're into waifus, these slides can probably show you why I've been watching these series. These are some really stunning looking women. And by the way, the original actress in the 1983 version, she passed away subsequently in 1985. She was only in her 20s. So rest in peace, Barbara. And I do feel bad for her because I think the entire country of Hong Kong was mourning for her at the time. Because she was very iconic. The storyline itself has been very iconic in the Chinese culture for a very long time. All right, now that you got some eye candy out of the way, let's get into talking about the notices. Now, I noticed there's tons of stuff going on here, but 
To save us some time, I'm not going to talk about everything. The October update, you guys already know, has been here for a few days and you guys already seen though. Another thing is they have changed the monthly missions. So those are going to be already updated. They're going to be giving us newer items, etc, etc. Weekly campaign, of course. We're going to be getting our 2,500 gems, skip tickets. Cubes, Fragment of Thought, very nice. Don't forget, make sure you farm this. Item drop 2x, always very nice, especially if they're giving us new units. It's a great time to really work on your jobs to get them all finished up. All right, this is gonna be the new event for the week. It's gonna last us 14 or 13 days, and they're gonna be giving us Guga and Sega. Wait a second, these are some really odd names. Are these gonna be units later on? I'm sure they're gonna be units, but Nevertheless, it's going to be an event in which we must kill things and gather metals. Always fun, right? So you get to have a chance to gain materials for Lorela and Glacial. So the Valkyrie and the Ranger. So I'm assuming we're going to be getting a bow weapon, maybe? Rainbow Spears, very nice. Fragments of Thoughts, all the good stuff. And then if you clear Chapter 10, Zazam the Unkillable. And unlock the high EX quest, of course, that's kind of like, without a doubt, now we get EX. So, yep, we are getting a bow, the Roomba, which we have not had yet, but they have been in the shops. I don't think anybody's been buying it, because since we knew something was coming eventually. Now, it's an opportunity for folks, such as myself, to get the Ice Lance, which I'm going to be farming pretty good. I think the bow itself is also pretty good, but what are the chances of me getting that Ranger? None, because I'm not summoning. So I'm not going to go up to depth, but all three are new units. Laswell, of course, is the partner of Rain, so he is going to be a Knight of Grinshield. And then Glacial is going to be Valkyrie. Many people really were anticipating her. Lorela looks like a pretty cool unit. She is going to be the very first Ranger with a main job. So she's probably going to give us a weapon. I'm hoping she gives a bow, maybe. If not, maybe something really good in terms of accessory for Trustmaster. But I'm sure that will be revealed to us on Wednesday. And of course, I can easily look it up, but I won't because I'm not here to review the units. I will most likely do a should you save, should you summon video for these two units. But honestly, I'm going to have to skip these guys because I don't really need them. Especially at last, well, he looks really cool. But he reminded me when I first saw him when I was playing Final Fantasy Brave XV. I was like, I was like is this just a failed attempt to try to recreate Sephiroth? Maybe. Because to be honest, right, Ray looks like looks like Cloud. Even the stance in the game itself, he looks like Cloud. And, uh, you know, you, you have to rehash things, right? That's what companies do. They take something, start a brand new IP, and kind of take what already has been working and sort of some way rehash it. Personally, I don't really care about this unit, even if he's super powerful, yada, yada, yada. Not my cup of tea at this point, because I simply just don't feel like spending way more gems to summon for units that's going to be in the database. And that's always been my philosophy. And I think anytime you have units that have guaranteed hit, they're going to be very good. Because this is why evasion doesn't technically speaking always works in terms of arena slash PvP, simply because we are armed with an array of skills that are guaranteed hits. But nevertheless, still many people go with evasion simply because, you know, they know that they can catch a lot of people off guard, right? So Lorela, I guess, pretty sexy ranger. She is pretty cool looking. I like the dark hair. She kind of reminds me of Hinata a little bit from from uh, Naruto a little bit. Yeah, I guess that's her gazing eyes. So again, the opportunity here is that you will be able to get these units to probably limit break four easily throughout your journey of the week, especially the fact that they give you free 50 shards. And of course, Glacial, we get a bunch of shards throughout the month. Great time to pick them up if that's who you were aiming for or planning for all this time. For the rest of us though, if you didn't plan on these units, you didn't care too much about them, it's an easy perhaps skip for now or you know you can think about it. But going into the future, there are a lot of things that I really don't need to really talk about because they're just going to be rehashed every couple of weeks, right? For example, I'm just going to say, oh look, we got JP Quest back again. Oh look, we got the 2,500 jams for this week. Make things simple, save us some time, because speaking about the same things over and over every single week gets pretty old for everyone. Alright, that's all the time we have for this video. I want to thank y'all for the continuing support. Remember, time is your most valuable resource, so spend it wisely. As always, 
Take care of yourself and all your loved ones. Nash Tater and his family out. Peace out.